quarter season awards, even if it's not quite quarter season, 18 weeks, we're four weeks in, four games out of 17, whatever. There's no quarter poll anymore in the NFL, unfortunately. But we're going to go through comeback player of the year, O-Roy, D-Roy, offense player of the year, defense player of the year, coach of the year, MVP. And then we're going to do our little draft at the end, have a quick new take on this one. No position groups. We'll get to it at the end. You guys will find out. All right, comeback player of the year. We all have the same one. Yep. Boring, but there's really no competition here. It's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. He's played really well. Nathaniel Hackett's offense has been an abject disaster. I don't think his, like, I find it crazy that they kept him around. I know why they did, because he's Aaron Rodgers' best friend. That's but, your boy. But that scheme is not doing them any favors in that offense. But Rodgers is Rodgers playing it, by good the way. Let's, let's not. Let's oh, not I know. Play. Like, he's, he's, that's, that's what I said. He, he wants it. Yeah. He's always wanted what I think is abjectly objectively not great offense he's idolized peyton manning in the early 2000s where they would run no move no move no motion guys just go up and win on the outside well that's great when you have marvin harrison and reggie wayne right? right when you have two hall of fame receivers by all means but they have one guy who can get open in that jets offense realistically and so it doesn't work when that's the I case. Agree. I, I agree. But that Rogers guys that played there told me, and you know that he didn't want any motion. Yep. No, I mean a lot of the old timers they they didn't like it because it muddies the it cloudies up that image that they have pre snap. Right. You know, guys like Marino and stuff like this, they relied so much on what they saw before the snap. They trusted it, and then they trust their arm to make these throws. Aaron Rodgers, same way, but you got to catch up with the times a little bit yeah. here. Maybe get somebody in there that can get a little fluidity. Because the pre-snap, pre-snap. is so different. Now, is, now they rotate, so you yeah. know, post-snap, and it's like you're not seeing what you – You different. saw it last night. They're showing they're showing right. single high. They're rolling to two high. Out and, you know, all the coverages. If anybody different. could handle that from a mental standpoint, it's Aaron Rodgers, though, you know, to be able Should. to adjust. I know. There's somebody that an OC was like, okay, Aaron, we're going to incorporate some motion in this offense. I think it'll help us. You'd well, think Aaron would be on board. Lafleur did it the last year, it and and it and he looked better. I thought he looked better using it. I don't know why he's so yeah. Twenty twenty one. That was he kind of like l- relented on that, allowed them to really open up the playbook, and that was you know probably his best year from just like a pure pocket passing standpoint because he didn't run at that point. He was just by the way the, was- the the criteria for the award has changed. So when it does get voted, it's not going to be like Joe Flacco couldn't win the award this year. It has to be coming back from an injury, injury. or something. So gotcha. Yeah, good or a medical emergency. And I'm one of the. Or he voters, died on by the way again. All right, offensive rookie of the year. Another unanimous decision from the desk here. Jane Daniels. Do we even need to discuss it? Is there even anyone who's well, in the neighbors? Ballpark? You could have made neighbors a conversation. The Those would be the conversation right there. Would be neighbors the second in the NFL in receiving yards. Yeah, that would be the that, that was the debate, but it, it has to be Jane Daniels. Yeah, He's been I, amazing. I th- when now I, I do think quarterback gets undue deference in these awards. I thought last year Puka Nakua broke the rookie receiving record. Right. Now, I think Stroud was maybe more impressive at the quarterback position than Puka was at the wide receiver position. But this year, it's like Malik Neighbors, if like Daniels does fall off, comes back to earth a little bit over the next. Malik Neighbors is like a top five receiver in the NFL right now. Truly, when you put by his table, he unreal. is out of this world. So I think that is a conversation. Should Jaden Daniels, you know, regress back to, let's just say, 10th to 12th best quarterback in the NFL. That's just kind of that's where like Stroud kind of was last year, 8 to 12. I would lean neighbors at that point because he is playing at a higher level for the wide receiver position than I'm just saying like Stroud last year was right. at the quarterback position. So I don't think positions should matter for this award. That's just me getting on my soapbox. But at this point, Jay Nielsen is like, he's like the best quarterback in the air. But think you know, like this for a second. Weeks. It was Burrow throwing to Jefferson and Chase at LSU. It's Daniels throwing the neighbors and Brian ETJ, Thomas. I, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, well, that's how you put up. I mean, two of the greatest. And the kid who's there now is pretty darn good. History. It was the third wide receiver at LSU. Uh, yeah, Kyron Lacey. I yeah. loved hearing yeah. Jamar Chase after the game. Um, he essentially said, "You know, I'd never seen that guy play in person, <laughs> but he's really good." <laughs> Talking about Jaden Daniels last he, time. It's a, two it's a, he makes it so. And he easy. makes everybody fans. There's only a handful of players that lead. Like if I'm an offensive lineman, if we go three and out and come to the sideline. I usually go to that metal bench and I get my Gatorade bottle and I bitch about the, all the blocks I missed or the bad calls that were made. There's some guys where you leave that bench and you go take a knee on the sideline and you just watch because you love football. Jane Daniels is one of those guys. Yeah. All right, defensive rookie of the year. A little more debated here. There's been a number of guys. I don't think anyone's really shown out as like nobody you know, is Will shown Anderson out. Yeah. stud right out the gate. 
But I think we all have a unanimous decision here. We recency, all went Jared Verse. Yeah, recency bias for me TN. playing against the Bears. We get to see Jared Verse and those guys, and you know they're in the backfield all the time. It's you know they're they're wise beyond their years in terms of rush and intelligence and working together, running games, and it's been a big reason why the Rams are in games this year is that defensive front. Yeah, I mean he's had a number of impressive reps over the course of the season. Seventeen pressures, seven more than any other rookie defensive lineman so far. And he like doesn't come off the field for that Rams defense run pass. I think he's been effective versus both. And the other kid's going to be a good player too. Yeah. Fisk is starting yes. really flash too. So they Fisk they, they have some... bully ball. Yeah, I will say this: if Quinion Mitchell did not have the last drive he had against Atlanta, where he was like himself single handedly responsible for that drive, unfortunately, I think mean, he gave up back to back big catches on that one. I would have gone him. He's played awesome. Yeah, five PBUs already in the young season. Like he is the only reason Philadelphia's defense on the back end has any teeth. Not a lot of guys playing great football for that Eagle secondary, but Quinion looks like the CB one that everyone kind of built. But there's not been a lot of um, like big statty numbers from any of these rookies. True, also true. Right, like right. it's pressures for verse, not yeah, sacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no one really getting picks. Yeah, that's why Nate Wiggins. If you would have caught those two picks this past week, my mm. defensive rookie of the year call would have been looking a lot yeah. better. Different combo. Yeah, but we'll see. All right, offensive player of the year. Who we got? We got different ones here. I went with Jaden Daniels here. Um, and, you know, I don't really know exactly what the difference is between an offensive player of the year and an MVP and all that kind of stuff. Because, in my opinion, they're the MVP is always a quarterback. They're one it's, the that's same. how it's kind but of. But I'm going to be a rule breaker here. I'm going to put Jaden Daniels at offensive player of the year, quarter one. He's the most electric guy in football right now. There has been no answer for Cliff Kingsbury and this offensive style. I think his confidence, his intelligence, his calm is light years above everybody else right now that's in his class. It's not an indictment on, on anybody else in his class. It's more of just understanding greatness when you see it. Jane Daniels is great, and he's the offensive player of the year for quarter one for me. I went with a running back. I went with Derrick Henry. I, I think he's been a beast the last two weeks. Uh, he, he's averaging six yards a carry. Six? Yeah. I mean, and granted, he had the long run, so it skews it a little bit, but he's been phenomenal. And normally, you know me, I mean, he, I, 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 one of those guys that thinks running backs are all replaceable, you know, pick one mm -hmm. up off the shelf and put another one in. And a lot of times it is, but he fits with what they want to do physical. And he looks like he's younger than he was three years ago. I couldn't believe he didn't have more of a market this off season. Like it just, if you've watched him over the course of his career, he's almost like, I don't think he's aged. Like he, you said he's younger than he was three years ago. It's just the Tennessee offensive line went in the absolute tank. He was still, Derrick Henry, like he's uh, now obviously you're seeing it now with the Ravens. So, yeah, that one's hard to argue with, in my opinion. I went though with Nico Collins leading the NFL in receiving yards by 102 right now. He has 488 receiving yards. It's a little early for on pace stats. He's on pace for over 2,000 receiving yards this season. He's been phenomenal. He's been the offense awesome. runs through him. Yeah, and everyone thought, like, oh, they got Diggs. And Pierce, it's like you just assume Diggs is like, oh, no, it's Diggs is not the number one there. Nico Collins from day one has been the guy that CJ Stroud's looking to every single week. So, yeah, Nico Collins has been awesome this year. And a physical specimen. And a, 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 the, the rare physical specimen that actually fits the billing. You know, like some of these guys, they look like Tarzan, play like boy. This guy absolutely is a specimen. Well, when you and pair – CJ can throw him the ball every That's the thing. You pair a guy who's built like he is with, you know, like six, eight wingspan kind of guy – with a accurate guy who would put it anywhere, and that's just a recipe for first down to first down. Like that's well, that's like what you saw. You love those DK Metcalf. It's like the yep. sideline throws, stuff like that that nobody else can really make. But and and when he crosses the field at that long stride, of his, you know, you see DBs trailing a lot. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's a good. He's a it ends up looking like Derrick Henry running by Demar Hamlin yeah. last night. It's yeah. like that's two different types of athletes, yep. and you get that with Nico Collins in the open field. All right, defensive player of the year. Who we got? Defensive player of the year for me, it's Aiden Hutchinson, and it's you know it's a volume. He's he's a volume statistician. The guy's on the field a lot. He gets after the quarterback a lot. And he gets him in bunches. We saw three and a half, four sacks a couple weeks ago. He's at five, five and a half now on the season. I just think that his value for that defensive line and the chaos that they put on the opposing quarterbacks pressing the pocket. Where was he last night, though? He didn't do it. If a you watch him, he got a holding penalty called. Yeah, but it wasn't as yeah, dominant go as he watch the bull, Go watch the bull rushes. Go watch yeah, the Yeah, but it wasn't as dominant as, good, as he should have been against that line, though. Hey, he's playing bully ball on the edge every single time he's on the field. He makes life a lot more difficult for the quarterback. And if you don't think that at the back of every quarterback's mind, it's where is Aiden Hutchinson? No, I get you. You're wrong. In my opinion, and Jacksonville should have picked him. He changes game plans in the run. He changes game plans in protection. 
And even when you do have the right protection, he might get home. So Aiden Hutchinson, beast. Give him a defensive player. The I'll first say this quarter. about Hutch. Four straight weeks he's gone against backup tackles. Right. Four. <laughs> keep, keep he has had, he had the luck on. of – uh, the Irish here going through the first Well, the luck, of, the luck of not coming off the field, playing hard, and sticking to your rush. Well, yeah. Not giving up right. ever. To me, that's, you know, yeah, I, mean, I hate to say this player. about D linemen, but it ain't as hard as offensive line. It's not. You got to go give tremendous effort, and with tremendous effort, you get rewarded. And he's been rewarded a lot early in the season. I think it continues because of the Ben Johnson offense and the success they have putting points up. They're going to have ample opportunities to rush the passer. He'll, he'll, he'll get some wins against some starting tackles too, Mike. I went with Fred Warner. I think he's been phenomenal. And it, it, the play he made the other day, I mean, leaping for the interception, pick, getting up and running it back for a touchdown, he's all over the field. And and remember, this is a team that's had problems with their defensive tackles, mm-hmm. and this guy still can get sideline to sideline. I still, You know, the best way to attack him is run at him, obviously, but uh, he's been outstanding, so I made him my defense. Player. I have Fred Warner as well. I said this on the show yesterday. I – I haven't seen a linebacker play like this in a while. I mean, it's been Keekly. almost a decade. Yeah, it was like prime Keekly, prime Bobby Wagner, you know, prime Patrick Willis. It's been a while since we've seen a guy really at this level. Two picks, three forced fumbles, a sack. And then the crazy thing is he's only allowed four catches on nine targets. Like linebackers usually are getting, so you know, good. high end percentage of their catches because it's a lot of stuff in front of them. No, not for Fred Warner. 39 yards all season long he's allowed. So two only, only two missed halves on 30 attempts. It was just it's like phenomenal. He's it's a perfect linebacker it's, play. Right now, there's nobody that plays the position like him on yep. the inside linebacker. He's no in a league of his own. All right, coach of the year. Another unanimous decision yep. at the booth. Kevin O'Connell, one of the two 4-0 teams. And now it's the other 4-0 team. is kind of like getting behind the skin of their teeth. Not the case for the Vikings, who seemingly every single week dismantle one of the best offenses in the NFL. And on the flip side of the ball, offensively, just making mincemeat of everyone. It's just easy. First halves of games, they just come right out to a big lead and then just coast. It's it's uh, really impressive what they've done there. There's some coaches you have when you're playing this game of football, whether you're in high school, college, or the NFL, there's some coaches you have where you know that the team is going to have to play really well within the scheme to win the football game. And then there's some coaches you have, and I had one my senior year in college with Chip Kelly offensively. When we stepped off the bus, no matter who we were going to play, we knew we could put points on the board. When I think about Kevin O'Connell and the things he's allowed Sam Darnold to do in that offense, they have that confidence. And you add Addison back into the lineup, and now we're going to see that playbook expand even more. And we got to see a glimpse of it this past week. But Kevin O'Connell, coach of the year, and obviously it helps to have Brian Flores on the defensive side of the ball, but kudos to them. And he doesn't coach scared. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I Too many times in this league, guys <laughs> coach scared. He does not. And it helps. He has those weapons. But even when Addison isn't, it wasn't there, he wasn't coaching scared. Yeah. And about f- four or five years ago, I was at the Combine, and somebody I respect said, that guy's going to be a really good head coach. And I go, really? And they go, you watch. And he was right. Wow. Yeah, he was right. And he's not, you know – He's not the yeller, the screamer. He's very much like a new wave sort of head coach, but he's very steady. And you mentioned he's also aggressive. Like, like he's not the guy who's going out beating his chest, talking about how aggressive he is. He just is confident. Yes, it's very he's very steady as a head coach. And you have kind of like that the butt kicker on the other side, and Brian Flores, who's going to set his tone. He's turned a career quarterback who had a completion percentage under sixty going into this year into an MVP candidate. Yeah, I know his offense. Guy knows offense. All right, MVPs, good lead in there from Pete. Who you guys got? Four weeks. I went with Darnold. He went with Darnold. He did it. I did. Not just MVP candidate. I did. He's his eleven touchdowns is amazing. Think about that. And and again, from under sixty percent going into sixty eight, he's averaging eight point eight per attempt. He's getting the ball down the field. And yes, he has weapons, but Addison wasn't there for for weeks. So Mm -hmm. I like what they're doing on offense, but I think he's handled it well. Having said all that, I am a little – like in week eight, if we do this again, I'm not so sure he is going to be the MVP. But right now, he's the MVP. For me, it's got to be Josh Allen. And I think about what happens to the team if this guy's not on the team, you know, in terms of value. And the argument could be made for Jaden Daniels. And I wanted to have both these quarterbacks in this offensive award conversation. So I just gave the offensive award to Jaden Daniels. If you want to argue me on the MVP, go ahead. But I'm doing my due diligence to make sure we're good. Josh Allen, dude. Like, the way Fred Warner plays the game of football, he's in a league of his own physically, mentally. I think one thing we don't give credit to Josh Allen for 
It's his mental acumen, his ability to understand the, the, <clears throat> the game of football. He is as bright as he is freakish. He's gotten more accurate through the years. Obviously, a big loss against Baltimore, but this team right now is where they are because Josh Allen has been dominant. And the stats would have been better. You and I were talking about this earlier. They've been some blowouts. <clears throat> We've seen Mr. Trubisky in games, so it hasn't been Josh Allen for four quarters the entirety of the season. I think Josh Allen's the MVP, and without him, you don't have a chance at Buffalo. If you asked me it's Friday, I would have put Josh Allen in there. I just think this weekend kind of fit yeah. it a little bit for me. I went Jaden Daniels. They are leading the NFL now in EPA per play offensively. He's leading the NFL in EPA per drop back. They've gone two games now where the offense scored every single possession. And then one of the games they didn't, they also scored 42 points. So this offense is humming. And on paper, you would never have said that preseason. Just flat out, you know, does – now they've played well. Obviously, like the offensive line has played better than expectations. That might be why. But also some of that's because you have this mobile quarterback who's a freak back there. You just have to rush differently. So I think Jane Daniels has smoothed over a lot of ills on this Washington commander front. And the fact that they're doing what they're doing offensively. Great He's quarterbacks cure your ills and bad ones expose. Oh, it's it's so true. It's everyone, everyone talks about situation. And it's like when you truly got it, you raise above to a level that you know, not that what we saw from Bryce Young. Like you raise above it to a level that you still can play in the league. And here, this is a begs this question. He he might be better than CJ Stroud. Yeah, I mean, offensively in right terms now. of, I think Stroud's, a, Stroud's probably the better so pass, far. Stroud's a better passer, but it's just like you can't put a number on the, right. what he does as a runner. It's right. just so valuable. It's amazing. So I just remember when Lamar they both make it look so easy though. Yes. Both remember, of them. Remember when Lamar got in, into the you know draft process and they were like are you going to work out as a receiver and that was kind of like a he he like it's here's a receiver a quarterback and then it was obvious that he was a quarterback Jaden daniels came in and there was no questions about what oh, yeah. he was he could do the things that lamar could do with his legs but it was a, his pro ready ability to read defenses make throws on time and be deathly accurate with the football that that lands him on this mvp did they, list did they draft the wrong guy in chicago you know moving on here we're going <laughs> to that one that's a conversation we'll have in year three uh, yeah, we got to wait a little wait, bit. We don't wait. We don't wait for anything. <laughs> right now, I don't know. I don't have your answer. 